we're going to talk about Scream. Oh, Scream is coming. Scream coming right. out tomorrow. Highly, um, we're a fan of the franchise. We're the last one came out. If you're not counting the MTV series, I think it was 2011. Uh, we're doing a podcast that we're going to be dropping. That's going to be a little bit more of a long form of what we're going to do. And we're going to go over each entry. We're going to be doing that with our friend from Cork, Ireland, Brendan, to be calling in. But are you excited for Scream? Um, I'm somewhat. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm marking out for it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm hearing good things. That's making me interested, you know? Yeah. Um, I was re-watching the original Scream. Great. Classic. Feels very 90s. And then I was watching some of 4, and it didn't really grab me. I wasn't. It just wasn't getting me. I don't know. I'm not sure why. So I hear this is a clean reboot? Sequel boot? Okay, so are they jumping? Or I didn't hear anything about it. I've been avoiding spoilers. Well, so it's not spoiler. It's so just, I, I didn't mean, know if they it, are, I'm just saying in the sense Are they going to do the, like the Halloween or the Chainsaw Massacre where are they just jumping from one to the next? Or no, they, no, they all exist. Oh, they do all exist. This is just from the title. This is just Scream. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so it's, it's kind not of, technically I heard, Scream. I heard, a, I heard a new term the other day, and it's not it's it's not a reboot. It's not a sequel boot. It's a requel. What the hell is that? A requel? A requel. Is that Scooby Doo requesting a requel? <laughs> well, I mean, instead, it's not a reboot. It's not a sequel. It's a requel. Oh, it's a okay. new thing. All right. Well, I'll, I'm I'm gonna give it a shot. I mean, are you excited? You you're very excited about. Uh, it. yeah. I mean, we're. I I mean, I love going into horror movies. Here's the, here's the thing that's a little bit different. Why is just like I would be more psyched for you know the Halloweens or the Jasons and you know Freddies because it's the same character. This is Ghostface, but it becomes ironically Scooby Doo talking about requels. It becomes more of a murder mystery and it feels a lot more grounded. It's there's not, even though there's a lot of things that would be considered a stretch, there's nothing that's technically supernatural with where all the other ones have a, a, a sinister supernatural feel to it. Scream doesn't have that, which, and I don't know if that's ironic that Matthew Lillard, who was, you know, from the first one went on to become shaggy and all about the murder mysteries. But I noticed one big thing that I noticed is there's a lot of backstabbing, and I don't literally mean twists and turns. Ghostface stabs people in the back. Often, yeah. A lot. Like when they're running or it's very like, I don't know, it feels a little bit more grounded in the sense that there, there's nothing spectacular about their kills. It's just like they almost feel like, oops, I stabbed you in the gut. That one might be fatal. I don't know. It just feels... And the knife is a little bit smaller, but the first one was just so such a breath of fresh air for the genre, just because it was something mm-hmm. different that it had a high bar, and I think it, they progressively got worse. Well, it figured out a way to to um, deal with the fact that slasher films had become so repetitive, right? Right. Because when Friday the Thirteenth came out, um, even before that, Halloween. There was hundreds of clones. Every holiday has a slasher movie attached to it. I guarantee yes. it. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, so uh, there was just so many, and they'd been overdone. At this point, we had seen Jason X. We had seen Jason Goes to Hell. Yeah. Um, but it got very more supernatural. Every Everything was just th- – those sort of genres had died out. So what this movie did – was came in and said, all these things exist as movies in this universe, right? It just invented this whole other way of thinking, right? Which Kevin Williamson was like kind of known for. I don't know. Did you ever watch Dawson's Creek? Yeah. I don't want to wait for my life to be over. So if you were a movie fan, it was fun to watch because they always had movie references, right? And yes. he was always talking about directors and things like that. Yep. So then this movie kind of did that where it just accepted, it took all these movies that everybody's seen and sort of takes the piss out of them the yeah. whole time. Um, while at the same time, having these really brutal horror elements in it, really scary stuff. Right. And, I mean, he does have, like, the, the, the stabs in the back. He, there's, like, some weak stabs where he's, like, stabbing, like, a, an apple or something. He's just, like, or yeah, something like that. Yeah, exactly. The, it comes off as very – that's what I was saying. It's not as methodical. 
it's very just like reactionary and just like, oh, I'm going to try to do this and Park I might I might hit you and I might not. And because there's a lot of people that got stabbed and didn't die, you know, and then all of a sudden they're walking around with a sling, you know, after the getting stabbed in the spine. But then some of them did. Podcat die. is in the house. Oh, it's on the. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, wrong side. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> She's fucking pod pizza. Anyway, but yeah, um, what were you saying? No, I was just saying it, it always came off as like these blows were very, I guess, guttural in a way that it was just like, you know, like a real fight. Like a real fight doesn't look fancy. It doesn't look pretty. It's just like. And they're scrappy and ghost faces are like tripping over shit. Yeah, he's always like, yeah, because I saw there was one there's one of the breakthroughs of like it basically became like they were setting booby trap for him like Scooby Doo. You can see Ghostface on Scooby Doo. It felt like it was like he he kind of ran weird and then he fell down the stairs and attacked. he was very just like all arms like a prepubescent kid that just all of a sudden went from five eight to six seven overnight. He's like I don't know what to do with my arms. But I'm you see, to stab I think you. that that all in the first one that was like very intentional, right? Yeah. Because the two killers, it was spoilers. If you haven't seen the first scream, <laughs> it's Billy and Stu. Is that his name Stu? Mm-hmm. Matthew Lillard, right? Yeah. So just think of their two characters. Stu was the one flopping around and slipping everywhere, where Billy was the more methodical one. Like the way they kill. You can see a difference in the ghost faces. Yeah, that's two of them. That's true. Yeah, and that was that was the twist, right? That there was a there was a double killer. Well, it's always two killers, except yeah. well, except for three. Yeah, three. Well, th- yeah, because that was just the brother, right? Because that was her long lost brother from the affair. Because yeah. it really, the, especially the trilogy, and they really could have kept it as a trilogy. They re- it really was keep it in the family, right? And then two, they went to you know it was Billy's mom that was kind of the mastermind. Of this, so they were keeping it in the family. Four was the only one that, right? That was, what's her name? Is it Emma Roberts, right? Where she was just kind of doing it for the fame. It was Hayden Picanet or whatever? Oh yeah, she was going to be the. Well, she was supposed. She was chosen to pass the torch. Yeah, you know, she was going to be the new Sydney, or right? The new yeah, the new Sydney scream person because she, you know, saved the cheerleader, saved the world. But the thing is, is that Scream is. I, I like Scream. I think Scream is genius. Scream two is fine. The other rest I don't. I don't need three and four. I just don't need. Like, yeah, I no, we I'm, didn't. I'm, I'm good. I'm good without them. Like I don't. I don't. Like if I'm gonna watch Scream, I'm only going up to part two. I'm just not gonna watch three and four. Yeah. You know? No. I yeah. Know. I don't. I really don't think you. Uh, in a way, you don't need to. So that's why I am curious of just like now that it's a requel. Shaggy, you're gonna go see the requel. But <laughs> <laughs> I am curious just to see again. And I, I am one of the people that is a sucker for the nostalgia, and it's been long enough. I didn't watch the series, but from what I read, the series had nothing to do with it and no tie-ins and it was almost like that was a true reboot that was just like coming up with a retelling of the same story so that one we didn't really have it they were just really resting on the ip so but i think it is really and i think scream you know because we're into the sequel boot series here i think it is really important that you do keep the nostalgia to pass that torch the series didn't have that the series like this is something completely new for a new generation. I'm pretty sure it was even a different mask on the series. It may have been, right? It may have been a little... They just called him Ghostface, but it may have been a little bit different. So, What I get... The sense I get from the trailers that I've that I've seen of Scream so far, this is not spoiler stuff. This is just from the trailers. To me, it feels like they're not... Whereas Scream was sort of uh, deconstructing horror movies, this one is deconstructing Scream. Right. So it's using... It's talking about... As the first one was talking about the tropes of like Friday the Thirteenth, this is talking about the tropes of Scream that are already pretty well established. They're like it's always two killers, it's always someone you know. So I think they're going meta in an, in a way that no one's ever done before. You know, um, I'm interested. I'm interested. I do want to see it. I'm into it. I just, you know, I'm, I'm just I'm a little jaded on slashers. I don't think I've seen a good American one like that in a while. So I don't know. Yeah. Have you ever gotten Scream 2 mixed up with a uh, scary movie? <laughs> I have. Yeah, well, I mean, your Scream was originally titled Scary Movie, right? You know that? Yeah. I. Oh, no, I did not know that. <laughs> that was the original title. That was, was the Scary, scary movie. movie. And then when they wow. made the spoof, they, they stole the title. That they actually called it Scary Movie. Yeah, that those, for some reason, I do get those kind of mixed up. And 
those I don't know. I haven't watched those in a while to see if they stood the test of time. At least the first one, because I feel like I remember everybody really enjoying the first scary movie, which is kind of like a a play against Scream. I can't imagine because those are so tied to like pop culture of the time. Yeah, it's uh, they're referencing like commercials on TV. It's like <laughs> oh yeah, you what? watch like scary movie and it's like <laughs> and twins. <laughs> <laughs> they do the Budweiser commercial. Oh yeah, you know? what's up? Yeah, yeah, they yeah, you're right. That wouldn't stand the test of time. But I am here's curious. a piece of trivia. My mom went to a garage sale and found a scream mask, and she texted me a picture, and uh, it was the scream mask, but it was not the scream mask. It was the scary movie mask, <laughs> where it's like stoned. Oh yeah. <laughs> And I said, she was like, look, I got the mask from Scream. It's like, no, that's the Scream from Scary Movies. It's like, really? That's a different one. And she put it on, she got it for a dollar or something at a garage sale. And she posted it on eBay and made 50 bucks. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. Trivia. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, so I don't know that those spoof Scream movies would hold up. I don't think they hold. I think... If you were of age in that time and you get the references, it probably yeah. up. But I can't imagine, like, a, what, what do they call the young people now? Like, tweener, tweeners? Yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> anyway, they, they watch a scary movie. It'd be like, this is the most vulgar, un, like, <laughs> it's awful. It makes fun of every, like, it's not, not PC in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. It's over the top. Yeah. No, I can, I can, I can totally see that. Yeah, because it was pretty brutal. I mean, that the first Scream had definitely... Some brutality that surprised me. I think it, in Scream, Dewey was kind of like you know uh, awkward and shy, and in Scary Movie, he's retarded. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's absolutely true. And then they they played that up because they, and they had that in universe film called Stab, which is a play on Scream. And then yeah, he got you know that was his heat that he had with Gail Weathers in the second one. It's just like you called me Barney Fife, and it's like the yeah. people really need to know who Barney Fife is now. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, so I guess that would be a little bit different. It did. The big thing that got, I think, a lot of people with Scream is they basically came right out and punched you in the mouth. Very similar to Alfred Hitchcock killing Janet Lee so quick in the movie that when you saw Drew Barrymore on the box on the poster that you're like, she's in this, and she gets whacked instantly and brutally, I think that was a stroke of genius on Wes Craven's part to say that these are rules are going to be different. It works to effect because like in psycho, the most famous person in the movie is killed immediately. Yeah. Right. So, and there's a thing, um, if you watch, here's one thing I noticed about, well, I, you know, I was watching like uh, recaps and all kinds of stuff. There's some cool shit going on in stream. Wes Craven is really brilliant filmmaker. Like he was a genius, you know? Um, if you watch Scream, the opening shot is of the swing outside the house, right? That's the opening yep. shot. It's the swing hanging in front of the house to pan down. And then the closing shot is Drew Barrymore hanging from the swing by her throat. Oh, no, I did not notice that. Yeah, so it's just like a big closes the loop on that. Wow. No, I did not have to go back and uh, watch that. But yeah, uh, I... I I'm like you. I, I can totally see myself going back and really taking in the first one again because you were so moved by it. And then the second one, possibly. But then, yeah, as progressively, I did notice that it, it very much, if you want to know who was famous the years those movies came out, watch a Scream movie. Because you're like, oh, my God, they got Putty from Seinfeld. And it's like, oh, save the cheerleader, save the world. Or there's Emma Roberts. I mean, they were picking. And then Jada Pinkett Smith, they were picking everybody, the, the new. Yeah, it's like a time name. capsule. It really is like a time capsule. And that's the thing with Scream is like that was the first time someone took slasher movies and they put recognizable people in those roles. Everything before that, there was always unknowns yeah. that were going to get killed. So they took instead a bunch of like TV actors that were fairly known and then killed them off which added a whole other level of uh, intensity to the kills right yeah and drew barrymore being the first one who's like super famous oh yeah i mean the, you basically watch you know gertie from et get gutted gertie gets gutted and i mean that was it was very telling for that choice because i know she you know she went through her her troubles that we kind of experienced in real life you know but that was kind of like she was coming back and 
somewhat of a resurgence, right? But before that, you know, she was making the Skinamax, the Poison Ivies and stuff like that. But she was becoming like, hey, remember this? What are you going to do? It's work. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I enjoyed Poison Ivy. But it's Gertie. You know, it, she, at that point, she was like, she played that role so well that she came off as like somebody that just like, oh, this is just cool chick. You know, there, there's no way that they're going to do something bad to her. You know, they're only going to do bad. She didn't come off as what pe- other people would think is disposable. And you got to understand, at that point, she's like, E.T. was still like the biggest movie of all time. Yeah. All right? Like, it's it was still the biggest movie of all time. It was the number one movie of all time, and it's Drew Barrymore from that movie. So it was even more profound than you can, like, uh, kind of, like, comes across with, with the, you know, the yeah. time has passed since. No, I, exactly, man. And they had... You know, Neb Campbell. I don't know if that was before or after. They had Party of Five. Then they had Girl from Friends. And that everybody. was while she was on Party of Five. That was while she And it was, was also while Courtney Cox was on Friends. Yeah. So these were all very recognizable from very popular shows. And even David Arquette, I mean, he went through a period, right, where he was going to be like the new hotness for a little while, right? Former WCW champion? <laughs> yeah, former WCW. David Arquette? <laughs> it is strange, but that technically is his title, isn't it? Yep. But... Yeah, I'm really curious. I hope, I really do hope they bring it, and I'm glad they got the three back. I don't like the throwaways of just like, oh, they can't bring everybody back. I think they picked the right people to do it as far as people working in the industry today. You know, Radio Silence, they did like some horror shorts, and then they did that Ready or Not movie, which I dug in a lot of ways. Some things I didn't like, but it just felt like they were the, yeah, they were the ones to do it. It was time to do it with them. You know, Wes Craven gone. Um, but yeah, I, I, I am, I want to see it. I want it. I just don't want to be let down. That's yeah. my thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've been hurt before. 